Revolution. I'm Serena. And I'm Jess. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. Today we are making Dr. Lisa's gnocchi and we're super excited about it. This is going to be a cheesy, cheesy recipe. <laughs> right up our alley. That's exactly right. Okay, so what do we need? We just need cheese and eggs, right? Cheese and eggs. Yeah. Yeah, she calls it like a three ingredient recipe. She uses some garlic with hers and we are going to use the mozzarella cheese and the egg yolks and form that into a dough. And if you wanted to put like garlic and onion in it, you would do that in this part of the recipe. And then we can talk about the sauce in a few minutes. Okay. We're basically gonna make the cheese and the egg yolks into a dough and turn it into a noodle. I don't think I've ever had gnocchi in my life. I don't, me either. No gnocchi for me. No gnocchi for me either. Her recipe calls for two cups. Yep, two cups. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a full two cups because it's just me. So I'm gonna cut the recipe and wing it and it'll be fine. Totally fine. I'm gonna put mine in the microwave. How long are you putting in the microwave? I have no idea. It'll be... <laughs> I decided to try two minutes. I can't remember what she said. <laughs> until it melts. <laughs> Wait until it melts. I'm gonna watch it. Okay. Which is not healthy at all. We're like this close to the microwave. Like, <laughs> what's going on in there? Exactly what you're told not to do as a kid. Yeah, my aunt and uncle actually put their, year, this was you know, years and years ago when I was little, they had their microwave in their laundry room and they would, <laughs> We would go in there and we would like push the button and then we would run and pull the door closed as we ran out until we heard it beep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Funny. I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever did that as a kid, but I remember being told not to like be close to the microwave. Yeah. But now we're like, you're like, who cares? I've lived long enough. <laughs> Now that it's melted, we're going to mix in the egg yolk. Yep. So I'm doing the two cups of cheese and the three egg yolks like Dr. Lisa. Mine, I just did like a handful of cheese and one egg yolk. I have tried every diet you can think of, but I'm never going back. This is <laughs> the absolute best ever. I can't imagine eating any other way now. Okay, mine's pretty doughy. How's yours? It actually looks pretty cool. It's like pretty sticky. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. Gooey, gooey. If it, it um with the fork, it feels like slime. You know, that slime you play with as a kid. Yeah. So kind of, now we have to separate this into um, different sections. So you probably have to do two. And I have to do four. And then we put it in the refrigerator for ten minutes. It actually feels like slime too, doesn't it? Yeah. It smells really good though. You know, because it's cheese. <laughs> this is definitely sticky. It's a messy recipe. Yeah. But not as messy as when we tried to grind up chicken. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was so disgusting. And not as messy as uh, dipping the chicken tenders in the pork rinds. All of our recipes are so messy. Okay, here's, do you cover it when you put it in the fridge or just put it in the fridge like that? She did not cover it. Okay. My favorite though is where we were grinding up chicken and as we were filming, you were wiping it with your foot on the floor. <laughs> That's my favorite memory. <laughs> we are actually going to use a sauce on ours too. So while that's refrigerating, we're going to go ahead and start our sauce and we're not going to overcook it this time. Yes. We're making the gravy that we made from the biscuits and gravy video because it's like one of our all time favorite things we've ever made. And it's literally just heavy cream and cream cheese reduced in a pan until it thickens. And don't cook it too much or it'll separate and then you'll be really disappointed like me. Yeah. And then the other day I added butter to my well and it was really good. Yeah, so this recipe is on like massive repeat in our homes, right? I mean, this recipe is it. And we were both shocked when we made it, when we first tasted it. We couldn't believe that we get tripped into the gravy that's full of 
you know, wheats and cornstarch and stuff like that, when you can actually make a gravy like this and have it taste even better than that. Best gravy ever. Mm -hmm. There's like no need for that other stuff. Like I made chicken wings the other day for Jared and he likes buffalo sauce. So we were looking at the store in the store for buffalo sauce and we were looking at the ingredients and they all had canola oil. So we found just hot sauce, like red Frank's hot sauce. Yeah. And I added butter into it. And he said, did like um, buffalo sauce. So it's like, what's the point of adding canola oil? Why do they have to add all that extra junk? It, li it has to be some sort of conspiracy because there is no point in adding all that extra junk. And you would think it's more expensive. They're using more ingredients up. Why would they do that? I'm the same way. The only sauce that I use on things, like I eat all of my meat, you know, just plain or with butter or with some cheese. But when I do use a sauce, it's for chicken wings and I use buffalo sauce. And I don't notice that it bothers me at all, but there is nothing like chicken wings with buffalo sauce and some blue cheese dressing to me. That is like my, you know, like blue cheese. I don't like buffalo sauce or blue cheese. Really? Yes. No, literally, I was I have the most picky palate, which I I am convinced is one of the reasons why I transitioned so easily to carnivore. Because right. I like there were so few things that I liked before I went to carnivore. So I'm doing like four times the amount of sauce as you, so mine's gonna take a while. <laughs> I think so, cooking for one. Yeah. I love your tiny little pan. Yes. I literally will make this sauce like three times a week just to like pour on top of things because it's so easy and so delicious. So delicious. And then I have yeah. my butter pan uh, ready to fry the gnocchi. So what we're going to do is when we get it out of the refrigerator, we're going to spin it like you did with Play-Doh when you were a kid and make it into a tube. We're going to cut it into small pieces and then uh, Lisa says, Dr. Lisa says that if you want to get fancy with it, you can go ahead and put a little fork press in it, but I don't think either one of us are going to do that. I don't really care what it looks like. No, it's fine. I don't care. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. And then, so you boil it for just two or three minutes till they start to float. And then you take them from the water and you put them into a pan with butter to let them get a little bit brown on the edges. My, yours are much more like dough than mine. I wonder why. I don't know. I mine just wait. I, I eyeballed it. Maybe I have good eyeballs. Like, <laughs> you must. I'm, I'm good at eyeballing the things and winging it for some reason. Sometimes, but then sometimes it can go horribly wrong. But I guess this is one of the, with cheese and egg yolks, I can eyeball it pretty well. Okay, so now we gotta make it into a tube. I must have not used the right amount of cheese in mine. Mine is still sticky, so. Yeah, mine is too. And then cut it into pieces. Oh, yours is doing better than mine, though. I think my cheese to egg ratio is off a little. I like ability to make a string is off. <laughs> I take back everything I said about having good eyeballs. <laughs> I spoke too soon with too much confidence. <laughs> what is Noki even supposed to look like? I don't even know. Cut it into like little chunks. I'm gonna make cheese balls because I don't, because my gnocchi's not coming out right. What is gnocchi anyway? I don't even know what this is supposed to look like. It's, um, it's kind of like a noodle, it's like a dumpling. Mine's really sticky, so I'm just pulling it apart with my fingers. Okay, mine's really sticky too. The, um, the ratio of egg yolks to um, cheese might matter a little bit more than we thought that it did. <laughs> yeah but it all matters how it tastes in the end. This feels like a craft project that a child would enjoy. It does. So those of you with small children, this is a great little project to make in the kitchen. Yeah, if you don't mind them getting cheese fingers. So they're not as pretty as Dr. Lisa's probably. I'm probably about to overcook my sauce by accident. Don't do that, take it off the heat. Yeah, I just did. Okay, I'm gonna do half and then do the other half, right? Yeah. Okay. 
It really does feel like a dough though, doesn't it? Yeah. We kind of made this for the mac and cheese recipe, but we made it with meat instead of cheese. Yeah, this was much easier. The mac and cheese recipe, we had to put it in a bag and then snip the end. I have half of mine in there. I'll put the other half on this plate. I can see how the dough being, um, you know, like a little bit thicker and a better texture would make it look better once it's gotten into the water. This is a little bit like they're not neat little shapes. It's my birthday in eight days. I'm oh. going to be one. I'm going to be old. Really? Did you just say that to me? I'm going to be older than I am today. <laughs> it's just a number. Yeah. I have my butter melting. Mine's melted and ready. Okay. I used quite a bit of butter because butter. And then you take them out of the pan and put them directly into the butter dish. Yeah. yeah okay. Hopefully or too much from the water on them. Hers didn't really splatter that, that I could oh. tell. Do so. you have a spotted spoon? Mine has pretty beads on it. I like it. That's a nice <laughs> one. I have no idea where this came from, but it's in my kitchen now. I like it. Ooh, there's a little fizzle. It actually looks like scrambled eggs. It does. Like little egg, scrambled egg balls. My sauce is really good and thick. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the heat because I don't want it to separate. It actually feels just like gravy. So I think that's perfect. So I'm gonna actually put some ground beef in my sauce so that I can have a little bit more protein with it. Can't go wrong with a sauce like that. There's probably nothing you could put with it that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Okay, mine are turning brown. Mine look good too. I think I'm gonna put them in my sauce. Okay. Let me flip mine. That. Yeah. Let me put some on my plate. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I'm gonna clean my plate. I'm not. This is the same plate I've been using this whole time for everything. <laughs> My sauce was like, my gravy is actually really thick. Mine is just like it was for the biscuits and gravy, I think, the texture. Did you eat one already? No, did you? No, no. It's really hot still. Ready? Yes. Bon appetit. You want to bon appetit? Okay, I was waiting for you to say bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, but I can't eat it until you say bon appetit. Hmm. <laughs> Very good. I'm gonna try. Piece of the gnocchi by itself. Yum. That is really good. Very good. The texture is kind of like a noodle, like, to be honest. It is, it really is. Even though we didn't even make it right, it still is noodly. I love our recipes because they're so versatile and mess upable, and then they're still delicious. Okay, so this tastes more like mac and cheese than the carnivore mac and cheese that we made. Like this I, legit like mac and cheese with the gravy and everything. I agree 100%. I didn't even salt it. I'm gonna salt mm -hmm. it a little. This is, this is, should be just mac and cheese because this actually tastes like mac and cheese from what I remember. This is delicious. Yummy. Yeah, this is um, very good. This recipe is a keeper for sure. And I like the, like the butter yeah. where I scooped it out of the pan from where it was frying. There's some butter mixed in here really good you know meal like for extra fat this is a surprisingly like good dr lisa did good 
kimchi. Mm -hmm. With this gravy too, it's so good. Yeah. So then gnocchi is really good by itself too. Here's a gnocchi all by itself. How brown and yeah, a little bit crispy on the outside. It's very good. Even by itself, it really, it really does very much resemble a noodle. It's very interesting. People say carnivore is really restrictive, but I find it to be very, very easy to do and very easy to find different things to eat if you start to get bored. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. And I, I made like the perfect amount. It was so easy. That's my favorite thing about carnivore is that you can make these recipes and completely butcher them and they still come out good. That's like has meat written all over it. <laughs> There's really not a whole lot of ways you could go wrong with meat and fat and cheese. Really. This diet was, I, I was made for this diet and this diet is made for me. <laughs> Cause I can, if, when I'm cooking, I can and will do everything wrong, but it still tastes good. <laughs> still comes out great. Yeah. Yeah. I um, okay, so this was wonderful. If you are interested in trying a new delicious recipe, um, Dr. Lisa has this on her channel too. It's a super easy recipe to make. Huge thumbs up for us. Definitely. I will definitely be making this again in the future. So join us next time when we butcher another recipe, but still somehow make it taste good. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Carnival Revolution. Bye.